Good day and welcome back to the Hopkins Demonstration Forest for part 15 of what is a forest. And today I wanted to step away from doing measurements of the trees and the heights, diameters, and wanted to talk about something else I want to measure when we're out in the forest uh, assessing the health or condition uh, of the trees, and that's to look at the wildlife. Now, we often want to get an idea of what type of wildlife might be using uh, an area in the forest. And we can do a variety of surveys and investigations, but, but oftentimes directly seeing the animal, uh, it's a challenge. So we, we often become investigators or look for clues. And there's lots of things animals leave behind in the forest from something they've been eating, uh, maybe where they've gotten the water source. We think about those four parts of a wildlife, uh, wildlife's habitat, the food, the water, the shelter, and being the right space or environment, those four things uh, give us the idea there's a potential that they could be there. Uh, but to understand that potential versus actually, you know, we'd like to have some evidence. So uh, we often look for things. And one of those things, uh, just like doing tree identification, is we can look for the animal's tracks, as well as the uh, top one there, the scat, or that's just a, a nice way of calling it the animal's poop in the woods. So uh, looking for that evidence of what animals leave behind can be very useful. And just like identifying trees uh, and understanding the different plants and vegetation in the forest, we can get some idea about the different species if we know a couple of characteristics in what to look for in those tracks. So there's lots of guides out there. Uh, I like this little quick cheat sheet. Um, we use this uh, when uh, the Oregon Forest Resources Institute had a guide that, uh, this has been in a few other guides I've seen, but a very simplified guide that talks about the different tracks. So what do you need to know about the tracks? Well, to start with, um, to get the general idea, we can break down the tracks into groups or families, uh, much like we do trees that have a similar characteristic. And what we like to do to start off with is just count the number of toes or impressions that are in the ground. So the very first one, that we have. We're going to kind of go in order from a uh, few toes to more. Uh, the very first one, uh, and this is termed the hooved family, but uh, two toes or two tracks. So here's a nice track and a good example. You see these all the time. Um, you think about about the size of, uh, you take two knuckles and put them in the ground. Um, you can probably guess what animal that is in the forest. Uh, give it a reference of size here with my finger. Um, that's a deer. So deer, elk, uh, we have antelope. Uh, there's been some reports I've heard of, even moose here in Oregon uh, in the Northeast, but our, our more common species are deer, elk, and antelope. Um, have two toes, very easy to see, very common to find, uh, but that's, that's kind of the easy one. As we go down in our tracks, as we identify these, the goal is if we do find a track when we're out surveying the forest, we can write that down as evidence that the animal is there. Uh, as well as other things as part of their habitat. Um, the next two um, are a little easy to find as well, but there's a little difference, uh, and oftentimes uh, people get confused. So the next two groups are the cat family and the dog family. Now, the cat family and the dog family, you can think of, uh, let's start with the dog. Uh, here's a fairly large dog print. And then here is a small, this isn't the best cat print that I have, but one of the things that the uh, cat print is missing that the dog has, uh, one, they all have four toes on the front and back paw, that's an important uh, identifier, but the dog print has its claws in it. So we have the hooved family with two impressions from that split hoof, then the cat and the dog family have four toes front and back, but the big difference is there is no claw marks uh, in the cat print. So if you got a very close look at this and kind of looked up underneath in these impressions that we made um, of some uh, prints, uh, you'll notice that at the end of each of those toes, there's no little hook coming out, so there, there's no claws. So we've got that as a fairly easy indicator. Um, and then after that, after you get out of the deer, the dog, very common, a lot of dog walkers, but coyote, uh, very dominant out here, uh, foxes, a few wolves um, in Oregon. But the cat print, uh, a little more rare to find. We have mountain lion, uh, bobcat, and then your standard house cat or feral cat that gets out. But um, pretty easy to identify. 
What really gets challenging uh, as we start breaking down the list and uh, we get into this next one, which isn't that difficult, but it starts to add a layer of confusion when we start identifying these tracks. So the next one still, uh, the hopping mammal family, just think of it as the rabbit family, um, has an elongated, usually back print. Now this one's exceptionally long, um, but the key part here is we need to count the toes still. And if you look really carefully, there's one, two, three, four in the end, and that's the back, and then one, two, three, four in the front. So with the dog, the cat, and the rabbit, or the hare, or the hopping mammal family, uh, it's all four and four with one defining feature. Uh, dogs have claws, cat don't, uh, rabbit has a heel, four and four. What gets a little confusing on uh, the end of this list are the other two groups, one called the rodent family, and this just kind of other group of a variety of different uh, uh, wildlife critters, um, you can see here this might look uh, like it's a rabbit because it has a heel. But what we need to do is count the toes. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four. So the front has four toes and the back has five. Not always the case, but by and large that means it's in that rodent family group. So we have things like the example I showed you here, uh, a squirrel. Um, chipmunk, mice, uh, there's a variety in there that are in that rodent group. But there are always a few rule breakers. And those rule breakers are what really come down here to this other category, and it's a real mix. So some very large prints, some very small prints. Um, you can see a large one. Uh, that would be, maybe you guess what that is. It's a, it's a big print. Um, so the size of my hand, I count the toes, one, two, three, four, five. Um, front or back, that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, you can probably guess some pretty big claws, a pretty big print. That is a bear, and that's a black bear print, a really large one. That's in the other group. Another one that's five and five. Uh, in this case, this is a skunk. Uh, count the toes, one, two, three, four, five on the rear and one, two, three, four, five on the front, so five and five. So it kind of looks like it might have a small heel in there, but uh, counting the toes is a great way to start. Uh, and then this last one, it's got a little red tint to it. Um, this is kind of a funny one. Count the toes, there's one, two, three, four, five. Or five. Well, this is still considered a rodent. It's got some webbing between the, 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 the feet there, the toes. And um, five and five, even though it's, it's considered a rodent, that is a beaver. So we have these rule breakers out there. But the key is, get yourself a nice guide, um, or simply a, a cheat sheet to get you uh, thinking out there, and uh, a short list to maybe go off of. And by simply finding that track, the deer prints, the elk prints, uh, pretty easy to find. But as you get in from the dog with the claws and four toes to the cats, which is kind of a rare one, to the rabbit, to those rodents, uh, when you get down to that rodent and other kind of group, when you have four toes on the front, five in the back, or five and five, uh, it's really beneficial to have a nice guide. But something else that you can do is when you do find that track, sometimes uh, the mud or the impression, the soil that it's in, that uh, it, it, it's, it's sometimes difficult to get a size. So another thing you can look for, which is always good to have laying around and spare, uh, is that other part of that guy, the scat. I know, oh, it looks bad. Um, that is, uh, this is actually rubber. Um, yeah, what, what, what type of job do you get where you get to have uh, to rubbered scat or, or fake poop to, uh, to use for education? But uh, looking at the shape and size of the uh, droppings uh, or what comes out of an animal, can tell you a lot about the size of the animal and can maybe relate uh, to that uh, track size as well, but uh, not always perfect given the impression. Uh, the other thing, it tells you about what the animal ate. So here's a pretty large coyote print, um, not in the, the right size, uh, or I have some coyote scat. And the shape, the size, but when you start looking at the real stuff, uh, the fur, what the animal's been eating, not only does it tell you the presence of the animal being there in the forest, but it also tells you what it's been eating 
And if you can find the food that it's been eating, and it's an animal, like a carnivore that eats other animals, then you also have, like, a, a, in a way, a two for one. Uh, and then, of course, you come out to the big, the big piles, and uh, this one is the, uh, the black bear. So find, finding the scat, uh, you can really tell a lot. Uh, often in the bear scat, you'll find a mix of berry seeds and fur and small bones, because that, that bear is an omnivore. So it has a pretty variety uh, of scat uh, composition. Uh, and then, of course, you have your herbivore, like the deer. Um, usually pretty small pellets. So uh, you can tell a lot by identifying not only the tracks, but the scat. It's really important to have these guides and, and why you want to know uh, this identification quickly is when you're out in the forest, say, putting in that uh, inventory plot measuring the trees, before you get out and really disturb the site and walk around, as you're doing that, you want to look around at your feet and, and see if you notice any of these features and make sure you write some notes down um, while you're out uh, collecting other information. So if you're armed with a little bit of background information about what the tracks look like, uh, how to identify just some of the main types of uh, scat, as well as looking for those signs of the animal's habitat, their shelters where they've been sleeping, a nest or den or just a bedding site, um, you can start to create that animal list of what might be using the forest uh, that you actually know. Whereas we go out and measure a forest, we get an idea of the potential, but this is gonna be uh, the, the true indicator that that species is there. And if we start seeing a lot of it, a lot of tracks, we can then start thinking maybe abundance and, and how many um, other animals. But at a minimum, it gives us the idea that they're present in the area, uh, and we just write that down in our field notes. So again, we're going to be moving eventually towards doing a, a, a virtual uh, experience out here, doing an inventory plot. But we've got to get all the information gathered so we can write it down in our data sheet and um, make that field visit effective. So wildlife, often we can get a pair of binoculars, try to go out and see it. But, but usually the wildlife and, and the larger animals are, are long gone by the time we get there, unless we're really quiet and creeping around. Game cameras and other uh, devices can work, but um, good old fashioned um, tracking Scan identification, it's an important function and feature to have when you're out and about in the forest. So uh, hopefully you can get out there, find some tracks, and again, looking to eventually get uh, a virtual field experience for you and do an inventory plot where we're going to put all this stuff together. So uh, look for you out here uh, real soon. Um, weather's looking nice. The sun is shining. And um, hopefully you can get out and enjoy. So thanks a lot. Uh, have a good day.